welcome to house building with surprise. Unfortunately, the presenter isn't here right now, so I have to start with them. Give it a try. Or maybe I can reach him. Wolfgang? Yes. 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 Ah, here he is. Can you come from? Oh, oh okay. People Sorry. are waiting. Sorry. Yeah. I was a little bit. I was a little bit. Uh, He's not really into it. Concentrated. So. Okay. Is it already? Yeah. Are we, are we going to start? Ah, oh, okay. Sorry. I, I was just fixing things in the back of the room. I was so concentrated. You know, there was this chair wobbling around and I had to go up to my room and get my tools back on, you know. Uh, but now it's working again. Now it's working. It's great. Great. You sure? Absolutely. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for the introduction. No worries. Hi. Yeah, my name is Wolfgang. I'm here today to tell you a story about house building with Scrum. Welcome to our show, you say. Uh, well, I have a lot of tools here. Maybe you can be an assistant for me. Can you take care of this one for me? But don't start fixing things right now, you know. Once the virus is inside of you, it won't never ever go again. Yeah? Okay. But I may need it later on once again. You all must be have built a house or an apartment or something right now. Yeah? Have you built something yet? Because otherwise it wouldn't make sense if you're here in this room to listen to a house building with Scrum. Or maybe you have plans to build something with Scrum. I tell you my story, okay? It's much more a story, it's much more like what we did at home. About two years ago, we had a plan. You know, my wife is here as well. My wife is somewhere in the back of the room. Give her an applause, Elizabeth. There she's waving. Hey. Uh, we had the plan to go from a one family home to a two family home. We had already some constraints, you know. This house was originally built in 1928. That means we had some limitations. We had some plans, we had some wishes, we had a huge wish list. Is it like that? If you start building something, you have a huge wish list? Yes, I think that's always the same, regardless of what you're doing. Um, and we tried to stay in this house. I mean, we thought about moving away from there, building something else, buying an apartment, all these options you can have. But we decided we want to stay in this building because it, it's actually the building my parents bought about 40 years ago. They refurbished it, they, they, they expanded it, they changed it, all these kind of things, you know. But this is such a neat place in our hometown. It's Graz and Austria, by the way. I'm Austrian. So if I use words you don't understand, I will use one word you heard already in the keynote. Kaput. <laughs> you heard it from me. Yeah, I love this word. If something is broken, if it's damaged, it's kaput. Remember that. <laughs> I will use it in words now. Um, yes, so we had this plan. We started right before that. This was the starting point in 2013. But before that, we had to make a decision. Do we want to stay there? Do we want to have something expanded there? Because it's not just simple and devil, you know? It's really, yeah, I would say it's complicated. In certain cases, it's already complex, like Neil uh, told us in the, in the keynote. Um, we had plans. We asked three different architects to make plans for us. You know, big design up front. Ever heard about that? Yeah, me too. We did that. <laughs> We had a plan there, we had three options, and we chose one. The latest one was the starting one for us two years ago. Why did we have three options? I learned it later on, you know. Three options is very good. What is, if you have one option, one option, sim uh, singular, what's that? It's dictate. If you have two options, it's a conflict. If you have three options, sorry, three, yeah, you know what I mean. It's a choice. Uh, ever heard the story about the donkey, the, star, the starving donkey between two haystacks? That's a conflict. That's, you know, here is a huge haystack. Huge haystack. Food. Very good. Here's another haystack. Huge. Very good. Here is the donkey in the middle. Oh, I go to this haystack. Oh, I moved too far away from this one. I have to go back. Oh, oh, oh. now I'm too far away from here. And this story goes on and goes on and goes on until the poor donkey. So that's the conflict if you have only two options, you know? That's the theory behind it. I learned it. I learned it. And I, I used that later on in our plans, in our when we really did when we did the real stuff, so to say. So, hey. Ah, okay. No, one back. We created something like this huge wish list. 
we made plans, we made such things like renderings, we used fancy tools up front. We had ideas, we want a nice kitchen, we want new bathrooms, we want a nice backyard, uh, we want something in the garden, we want a nice basement, all these kind of things. Great ideas, perfect. So, but before you ha can start building something in Austria, you have to go through all the authorities. And I can tell you what, bureaucracy in Austria is huge. It's really tremendously huge. There is not just one authority, you have to ask, there are at least five to ten. And once you went through all the stages, then potentially you get the permission to, oh, permission to build, sorry. You know, the new James Bond was filmed in Austria, so we got the permission to build, no, what's the, I think it's like that, something like that. <laughs> yeah, we got it. Hey, great, we have this plan, we have the permission to build, we can start. I mean, after the permission to build, the plan was, we go into detail planning. Detail planning for a house, what does that mean? Detail planning for a house means you need to know where are the, all the outlets, the electricity, the cables, where you want to have the installations like pipes in the walls and things like that. Detail planning. This was my idea of the next <laughs> step. Oh, yeah. What happened? I called it happiness and panic. We had this concession received, we had the permission to build. The next step, detail planning. Outlets, cabinets, tiles, da da da. Huh. But then, uh, we got a message from our architect, from our operating architect from the construction company. Okay, I will sell my company and retire in one month. There was a reason why we chose this operating architect. She was a very experienced architect. She knew how to build with in war structures, you know, where you don't have uh, bricks and all these kind of things, where you don't have stable walls, where you have not bricks, where you have something like Heraclid and concrete balance and all these kind of things. She knew how to deal with that. She was an expert in that. Great, we found her. We were happy. We went through all the discussions, conversations. We had everything in place and now she's going to retire. Ah. <laughs> Oops, uh, that's my panic a attack, by the way, you know. Um, I'm not so outgoing. Uh, maybe you don't believe that, but that's usually my panic attack. Oops. Okay, we had a big oops there, right? Has somebody else a, a, a panic attack? Who can give me a panic attack? Where's the microphone? Hell not. Where is it? Yeah. No? Do we have but a microphone, microphone stab. <laughs> yeah, panic attack. Who can give me a panic attack? I have no microphone! No, thank you. Yeah, this was a huge panic attack. Okay, thank you. We have to change our plans right before we actually start. So, we have two options. You know, I know this guy from an IT company and he later on told me something about it. We have two options. Option one, we want to find a new construction company with an experienced operating architect. We did this exercise before, it was not very simple. We found one company, in our region of course, I mean worldwide there are definitely more than just this one. But we didn't want to delay this for another three to four months by going again through all these conversations, to have these same discussions about, oh, it's not a brick wall, it's something else, etc, etc. Option two, just start, just start. Ignore the planning, just start doing it. Okay? Huh. Hard to say. Jumpstart. Sounds feasible, but how? How can you just jumpstart building a house? I had no clue. Absolutely none. And there was this guy from this IT company. He told me, why not being agile? Why not using Scrum? I thought, what? Agile what? Building houses? With agility? Agile? I, I'm agile. I'm doing sports. I'm running around all the time, you know. Moving. Flexibility. Yes, I heard that. Great. But what is agile? Uh, individuals and interactions over processes and tools? I mean, I'm building a house. I need tools. You're my second assistant now. <coughs> They'll take care of the screwdriver for me, okay? But don't start fixing things. <coughs> huh? Yeah, what else? There's, he told me something about responding to change or following a plan. Yeah, okay, in our case that might make sense. 
customer collaboration of a contract negotiation. Great. I'm the customer. If they don't want contracts from me, these construction companies and all their electricians and so on, but they wanted contracts, they wanted me to sign something. So I wasn't so sure what that means. And also this other <laughs> stuff, he told me something about working software. I mean, it, it, it was an IT guy, working software over comprehensive documentation. Okay, um, building a house without any documentation, okay, if you have to jumpstart, you have to do it like that. Later on I realized there should be at least some kind of documentation, like where are the cables in the wall, where are the pipes, all these kind of things. My amount of documentation later on was I took pictures. I didn't really measure it, you know, not centimeters, 10 centimeters from this wall as so and such. I took pictures. It was sufficient. Enough documentation. Made some kinds of sense, but scrum. Hey, I lived in Australia for a while, you know. I watched rugby there, I know this term. I know it's about sports. These guys are crashing together, they are breaking their heads and things like that. Scrum. Sounds dangerous. What should I do with scrub in house building? Does this make any sense? Well, let's see. The questions were, if it's really about flexibility, if it's about building half-ready things, I mean, I've never seen a... Okay, I have seen half-ready houses, but I didn't want to live in that, in these buildings, you know? So I want to build a house I can feel well, I'm, I'm comfortable in living in it. Also, my family. Hey, Elizabeth. Hey. Yeah, she's still happy. <laughs> if I tell something today which doesn't, uh, she doesn't like, she, she will stop waving <laughs> from the back of the room. Um, and also, how can I track costs and progress? You know, this guy told me, okay, you have to do it in iterations and all these kind of things. Um, but there's more to that. It's not just this kind of principles, he called it. There are other things, like early and continuous delivery. What's an early and continuous delivery in house building? Any ideas? I didn't have one. But an early and continuous delivery, if I build a wall and if I check it, that might be an early and continuous delivery. First wall, second wall, third wall, outlets, cables, pipes, stove, whatever. Yeah, why not? Okay, might make sense. I mean, you're still at the beginning, no, I, this is still about my confusion currently. Welcome changing requirements. Yeah, we had that already, so sure, yes, that's perfect, great, we take it. Uh, deliver frequently, pretty similar to the first one. He said, try to do something in one week sprints. Iterations, he called it sprints, and once again, we are back to rugby. I knew what a sprint is, so rushing down the field, getting the ball to the end, so and then making points, and winning the game. Great. We are making points every week of the year, every spring. <sighs> Not so sure. We have this huge wish list, you know. I want to have a lot of Cat7 cables in the house. This network. I, yeah, I'm a little bit influenced by IT as well. <laughs> Maybe. So we want to have this network, this high sophisticated network there. But what's, what can I do in one week? Working together with your team. So, the first thing was to find out who is the team. We have this construction company, but they are only the masons probably. Then we have the electricians, we have the plumbers, and so on and so on. But working together with them makes sense. But that changed my mind already a little bit, because if I need to work together with them, I have to be there. Not all the time maybe, but very often probably. Motivated, oops, a Motivated, this was not a panic attack, the words. Motivated individual support and trust. Yeah, if we trust each other, if I can trust them. And you know, I've worked previously on construction sites because my father had a company building houses, uh, building uh, windows, doors, fences, all these kind of things. So for about eight years, I worked at construction sites. And I never ever trusted an electrician after that anymore. <laughs> Because what I've seen there was really horrible in certain cases. So this part with the trust was a little bit tricky for me. Face-to-face -face conversation. Yeah, sure. I understand people better if I see them, if I listen to them, if I can talk to them directly. Got that. Constant pace. <coughs> we were already in some kind of rush, you know. We had this pressure. We, I will retire after one month. Okay, let's build the house in one month. Sure, let's do it. <laughs> 
a little bit of pressure. It's a constant pace. Yeah, we'll see how we can do that. Continuous attention to technical excellence and good design. Absolutely. I want a good design in my house building. Sure, absolutely. This doesn't contradict anything. That's perfect. <laughs> Simplicity. The art of maximizing the amount of work not done. Not building the wall up to the top, to the roof. Something like that. Well, let's see. Self-organizing. Oh, ouch. Self-organizing teams at a construction site. They're from different companies, for God's sake. How can I let them self-organize it? Hey, I, I want to have my stuff there. I need somebody who is in charge for that. I need somebody to command them a little bit more. This was my idea, at least. And reflect, tune, and adjust. Sure, if something doesn't work out, let's reflect on it, let's tune it, let's adjust it. That's OK. And break down what you want to do and have so it fits into one week sprints. He talked about user stories. I didn't really know. I mean, he told me about this uh, who does what and why and things like that. There's this format. OK, who is easy? I am there. I'm the client. I want something. Also, my wife wanted something. And other people wanted something. So the who was clear. The what was pretty much clear. And in certain cases, the why was completely unclear. So <laughs> this started another thinking process for me. The why was pretty good. And I've always used it, and I didn't use it as a cook or something. We just used the names Elizabeth, Wolfgang, etc. But it made sense. It started a thinking process. It was a good input. So, and he also explained the process that there's a simple process about Scrum. <laughs> this is called a sprint, pretty much. You do it in circles, you do it if you have a one week sprint, you do it every week. You do some planning, you go to a product backlog, you derive something you can do it this week. Then you do it, you plan it for the week, and then you have a product increment. Yeah, we found out that this could be a product increment. Why not? I mean, it's not the, 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 the whole solution. Absolutely not, but it's a part of it. Could be a product increment. Correct. <coughs> also made sense to me, but still I was a little bit anxious about this one week sprints. You know, planning just for one week, what does that mean? I mean, this is an uh, endeavor, and we had some time pressure there. We had to be back in, in nine months. It's, this also included moving out of the house entirely, everybody but me. <laughs> I stayed in there. This was an experience, I can tell you. Uh, but my wife, my kids, my parents, all, everybody moved out to other apartments. We rented an apartment, so, but only for a couple of uh, months. So we had to be back in October. Another time constraint. We had to consider this. Yeah. So, and she also told about roles that they're in scrums. Scrum are different roles, but for a construction site, who are the people? Who is the product owner? Okay, in that case it was simple. It was me. I was the guy in charge because I was I managed all these huge wish lists. We had all the requirements in there. We wanted something. The team, we had different companies working for us. We had an electrician company, a plumber, a carpenter. Uh, kitchen designer, electricians, uh, tin smiths, uh, stove builders, etc., etc. So I, I think it was about 10 or 12 companies working for us, not people, companies. And they didn't ever work together before. So talking about a team, okay, absolutely not at the beginning, definitely not. St stakeholders, yeah. My wife, once again, still here? Yes, perfect. My kids, they had wishes too. Sure, they were stakeholders in the traditional sense. And I found out there is one guy who takes care about how it's going on, about the process, this guy called it. And I found out my father, you know, he's a very experienced guy. He's retired now, but he's always doing something around construction sites. He knows how to build apartments, houses. He's, he learned Dean Smith and Lumber. So he has a huge history on, on building something. So we found out he might be the right guy to observe this a little bit more and to support it. To get it done, pretty much. Maybe also to, uh, uh, to build teams. But this was just an experiment at this time. We started. This was in February 2013. This was the first sprint. 
We were eager to continue. We were eager to get the cattle there and to dig a hole and to build the basement and get the bricks there and then it started to snow. First sprint, first delay, we cut the trees. That's all we had were able to do in the first sprint. But we did something, at least. Second sprint, second week, rain, snow, the caterpillar was already there. But none of the people, none of the craftsmen, no company was there. So another delay, I decided to learn a new skill. I learned how, how to drive and handle a caterpillar. It was fascinating, I loved it, I really can tell you. It's much better than such a stuff, you know. <laughs> but I couldn't bring it in here, so this was the problem today, but otherwise I would see, you'd see me walk, uh, moving around with it. Also my wife tried it, so we learned new skills. So the second sprint was just about learning. Great, really, great experience. So, uh, sprint three. Did you think it ran, ran through smoothly? Sorry. Yes? No? No, oh, you're shaking your head. No, it didn't went smoothly. We found out if we dig this hole there, the house might fall over. <laughs> Built in 1928, there are not many bricks in there or concrete or something like it. It's more like stones and like sand and yeah. So we had to underpin the house. We had to change our requirements for the third sprint. We had to replan it completely. Uh, we had to respond to change. Remind, remember, I, I told you already, this guy told me about the age of manifesto, responding to change over following a plan. We were flexible, we did that. Great stuff, it works. Third delay, okay. Sprint four, it took off. Sprint five, shell work finished. This was really great to watch. You know, we had great weather, you see the blue sky there, you know, that's what it usually, usually should be in Prague, and very often it is like that. It really, the, the, the basement was there, the, the bricks were there, the walls were there, we had all the shell work finished in just five weeks with three weeks of delay. Just by being focused on one thing later on. I mean, this was the, I, I would call it the secret for the first five weeks. And we made it in time before my operating architect retired. This was the important stuff about that, the important message. No, we did it. We really, really did it in time. Great stuff. And then, what well, after Sprint 5? Please? Huh? No? Yes? Yeah. Next Sprint, I already told you. What is the team? Who is the team? Different companies, 10 to 12 companies. We had to start with the team formation because my guy told me this is the secret to success. You have to have a team. We, don't, we, we talked about self-organization. Self-organization. And only teams are capable of self-organization. Working groups, uh, to a certain degree maybe, but not really. We're talking about teams. So, we had to have these masons, the painters, the plumpers, uh, another mason, uh, the, the tiles experts, electricians, kitchen designers, stove builders, etc. Et we had to pack them together a little bit more so they started to interact, not just working in parallel on different things. We wanted to have them as a team and working together to interact, to collaborate, to cooperate. This was uh, difficult because they saw each other from time to time as competition, you know. I don't want to work with you because you're from the other company, so I don't like you. What happened? I got a hint. This guy told me there are daily stand-ups in Scrum. Daily stand-ups. Okay. Come together, talk about 50 minutes about what you're doing, what your problems are, what you can do together, what meetings you need, whatever stuff you have to do. But these guys are on their feet 20, uh, 10 hours a day. So a daily stand-up didn't make any sense to me. We reflected, tuned and adjusted it to a daily sit-down <laughs> during the lunch break. It, is, it was all improvised, you know, there was all kind of things going on around this picture, you know. <laughs> this looks like there was, uh, there was a kitchen somewhere there. No, it wasn't. But we had, we served food, we served lunch. Every day we had up to 8 to 12 people in there eating lunch together. This was our daily sit-down. 
great thanks to my mother, she's not here yet, but she did the cooking and all those kind of things, so she was part of the team. Um, sorry, this was one too much. And what happened there it was, they started to talk about the, the problems. They started about talking what they were going to do in the afternoon or the next morning. Automatically, I ha didn't have to do anything. And from this point on, they worked together. The masons helped the electrician, the electrician helped the plumper, the plumper helped the painter. They had different skill sets, but they, they found out, okay, we could either sit down now and wait until the other guy finished his job. Or we go there, grab some tools, and start working together with the other people across company borders. It was really, really fascinating to watch. They became a team. Not all the people were there all the time, of course. I mean, this is not like the guy explained to me, if you have a team, keep it together all the time. And we have some limitations there, because not all the painters were there uh, seven, uh, five days a week, or etc. So it was a little bit of fluctuation in between. But still, they worked together. The bricklayers helped the electricians. The electricians used uh, machines to help the masons. They painted, started uh, painting wall. All these kind of things, unbelievable stuff. They really, really worked together. They loved to work together. And you know what's a good indicator for a project? The project is really working well, running well. If the scrum master has time to relax. That's what I learned. It's not only about observation. And if you love this picture, you will love the next one, I promise you. Because what is the Scrum Master's job? Also something I learned there. It's not just about observation, it's not just about the process, it's not just about being there and supporting and so on. We already talked about there are other stakeholders, you know? My wife, my kids. Huh? Yeah. Stakeholder management. If your stakeholders are satisfied, if they feel well, you can get acceptance by the end of the project. You can be sure about that. So the Scrum Master was already there to help with stakeholder management. You know? And you can see by the picture that she really was satisfied. She felt well. By the way, that's my daughter, Theresa, the young one. <laughs> so, another thing about stakeholders. They know that, sorry Elizabeth. Um, they not always realize what's going on, you know, incrementally. I learned about these iter iterations, this was the sprints, and we're, uh, we're talking also about this incremental stuff. It's not building all at once. I mean, it's building about all at once, but not all at once at the same time. That's impossible. So you have to go from one step to the other. I'm not completely sure if this is really what's meant by incremental, but it's probably something close to it. You know, there was already the new wall, there was already the door, but there was the rest of the old wall <laughs> and half of the window there. So, doesn't, does it look right? Yeah? No? Not really. There is still something missing. But for one sprint, I was satisfied. They built the wall with the uh, hole for the new doors and so on. This was good enough. This was a product increment as I understood it. It was for me, it was incremental. Good enough. Perfect. Then, I told you, responding to change over following a plan. We had changes at the beginning. We had changes before we started. Do you think we had changes in between, during the project, during the endeavor? Yeah. I, yesterday I talked at, in the evening to Bas Water, and I, I told him that I will have to talk today about uh, house building with Scrum, and he asked me, did you have change requests? And I said, 50. And he started immediately shaking his head because he was recommending not using Scrum to, for house building. Based on this experience, I can recommend it now. And we have had changes. We had 50 changes. We found out that we want a dial stove. So we had to go through the authorities again, which has some, it had some implications to our heating system. We had to build other stuff in there. But we added it to the repository, to our requirements, to our product backlog. We added this electric, electric, electric heating, floor heating in the, in the bathroom, in one of the bathrooms. Yeah, great, it worked. Um, our kitchen design changed completely. What I had in mind <laughs> was a little bit different to what, what you had in mind, Elizabeth, right? <laughs> yeah, it was. So we had, 
We have now this kitchen in our house, which I would call um, state of the art at least, and beyond that. So it's really great. We, every 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 tool you can imagine, every not just oven, uh, steam ovens, and whatever we have in there now. It's great. It works great. But I never uh, thought that we can have so much stuff in one kitchen that so much exists. Yet. And we did a lot of changes there before we went there. So the kitchen designer did a really great job, but it changed our product backlog and our timeline dramatically, I would say. Um, our neighbor told us, I want to sell part of my backyard. Do you want to have it? Uh, yes, sure. We buy it. I mean, the good thing was we had the money. <laughs> Without the money, of course, it wouldn't have been possible, but it changed our budget. So, and also not just the budget, we had to clean up the backyard because you, you see it's a little bit, yeah. She didn't, didn't, she built also a house on the other side, so it was messed up a little bit. And we built then another house in the backyard, uh, a hut, you know. So actually in these nine months we built two houses, <laughs> not just one then. So that changed, and some more other changes, a lot of other changes. So, hmm. Next slide, please. Yes. This is great. I really loved it. Ever heard about spikes? Yes? No? Raise your hands if you heard about spikes. What's a spike? Who knows that? Sorry? Exploration. Learning. Yes. I learned that a spike is something you throw away again because you made a do it for decision making, for exploration, for research, for learning something about it. You know, the painters came to us with these little index cards with colors on it and asked us, especially me, what kind of color should your house have? Choose. Huh? Choose? Okay. Uh, can we go outside? I need to see it in the sun. 120 colors. I think it was about 120 or so. <sighs> yeah, all of them. No, okay. Maybe not all of them. Uh, we want something more orangish, brownish, yellowish, something like that. But I still cannot decide. So I asked him, can you just try it out and do it together with the other colors around the corners and so on so I can see it? I learned later on this is a spike. Pretty much. We made our decision based on the spike. I was, it was, oh, oops, oh, once again, not a panic reaction, don't worry. It was something of, uh, like that. I learned also that there is a principle behind that, which is called, I know it when I see it. And this was really what happened to me. I saw it, I liked it, I wanted it. Index card? Okay, this is the same color. Maybe, but here I can see it, here I can touch it, here I can feel it, here I can sense it. Great difference. I know it when I see it. Worked perfectly well for it, for me. And once again, three options. <laughs> can you remember that? Not a starving donkey in the middle, not a dictate by somebody, three options. And we made a choice, the golden middle. Great. We had some other challenges. By doing it agile and by using Scrum for it, not everything ran smoothly. We had certain challenges like disappearing ladders, you know. <laughs> this guy's an electrician, he was trapped under the roof for, let's say, 20 minutes before somebody realized that he's up there <laughs> and somebody else took the ladder away. So self-organization, yes, to a certain degree it works, of course, definitely. And in certain cases, you still have to observe and react. Um, rising complexity, this was my fault. I have now three kilometers of cut seven cable installed in my house. I have a network, which no company has probably. <laughs> this is now a Faraday cage, you know, it's completely safe. If there's an earthquake, you have all the cables, it holds the help that the walls together. And if there's lightning from the, uh, you know, thunder, yeah, doesn't matter. It's a Faraday cage, it's secured. Perfect. But this wasn't the intention, of course. I just wanted to really have a future-ready network somehow. 
And this was the biggest challenge for myself. Like I told you, I stayed in this house. And if you build the floors and the concrete and everything, you have to try heat it. This was in July. In 2013, this was the hottest summer in Austria ever before. We had inside the house for dry heating about 40 degrees. And we had outside the house 40 degrees. So for me the challenge was to... I always woke up in the middle of the night between 2 and 3, so I went to the office because there was a shower. We didn't have a shower there. I did my emails, I came back in the morning at 7 and opened the door for the craftsman. So this was my rhythm there. This was a little bit exhausting, but yeah, I went through it. You have such times from time to time, some such challenges. That's it. So, acceptance test. <laughs> I really love that. You know, I'm here. I'm the, I'm the protocol. Remember, I have the role of the protocol. I'm the represent, representative. I'm the ch in charge of the repository, of the backlog. But we had stakeholders there. We invited them to test it, of course. So they really did a very good job in terms of acceptance testing. They really thought, thought about things we never thought before. You know, kids' eyes, kids' visions, they are much better than from the adults, from the parents. They have a completely different view of things. Of course, we found out that certain things work, others don't work, so part of the acceptance testing cycle. And, that's what I learned, scrum, reviews. We let the people who did the job explain what they did, and stakeholders were invited, and we said yes or no to it. You know, this principle was great with the electrician, especially, if not just with the electrician, but this guy gave me the greatest compliment to the whole endeavor. He said, we sat down in, on, on, like I said, we didn't have any details plan, plans for outlets for cables or such. We sat together on Monday. The week before, I thought about what could be done next week. On Monday, we sat down and I said, I want my plugs there, I want my outlets there, I want the cables there, I want the switch there and such things. Just nice little drawings, not really plans. <coughs> on Friday, at least on Friday, we came together and he uh, guided me through the rooms, everything <coughs> he had done. And I said, yeah, that's great, that's great. Oh, no, that's not so great that we need to change it ne next week. The best compliment I ever got from my craftsman, from this electrician was, I never ever had to work like that before. But I love it. I really love it. By the end of every week, I know what work was done and if it works or not. And not just by the end of this entire construction duration, you know. This was a complete paradigm change for this guy. But he said he loved it. And it's not a software developer. Yeah, this is the result. I mean, from the outside at least. We had this original uh, structure. You can see we expanded it. We had a new basement there. We refurbished the entire building. Every inch, except the roof, this is the only thing really left, every inch of this house was refurbished within nine months. The original estimation was about two years to go there. We did it in nine months with this principle, with this practices we used there, with this agility, with this scrum principles. Whether it's really scrum and agile, I don't know, decide yourself. All I can say, I was really satisfied with this experience. It worked for me. It was a great endeavor. It did the job. We are satisfied. It's not over. There's still things to do. And I think for product development, if you call a house a product, it's never over. It continues until the theory time. My name is Wolfgang Richter. I work for Chip IT. I'm an HL coach and trainer there. Thank you for your attention. If you want to use one of my tools, and I need to get that back, so you did a great job. Thank you. Thanks a lot. There is a question. You too. Thanks a lot. There are two questions. Questions? We have microphones there. Yeah, there is a question. I'll just talk really loud. Uh, the acceptance testing from the users—that's pretty clear. But yep. you also had to have acceptance testing from another party, the building inspectors. And yep. when the building inspectors came along and saw that you diverged from the original plan, what was their reaction? Uh, 
<laughs> they told us that it was very friendly actually. I, wa I was a little bit scared that something like that could happen and they tell us, no, you have to stick to the plan. No, it didn't happen. They were very friendly. They saw what was going on. We had to go through this permission surgery three times actually. Because at least, uh, along with the tiled stove, we had to go through it again. Um, and other things. They were really friendly. They told us, you have to do it like that, you have to do it like that, and please consider also this. And if you consider this, then I will accept it, I will permit it. This was the reaction. I, had, I, I heard horror stories about things like that. Nothing like that happened. Nothing, really nothing. I also heard other horror stories. I have friends which have construction companies, or had construction companies. They always told me, like, uh, the masons came and they did something, then the plumbers came and they did something and they had to revert the uh, work of the masons because they didn't interact and it was the wrong sequence. Nothing like that happened there because the people really interacted and did the work together. This was the really fascinating experience. Yes, another question. Yes, uh, you talk about uh, this was a contract actually with a different contracts with different companies. It was not just one compensation which I had to give the people because I was just a guide pretty much. Even if I'm the product owner, I was at the client level, you know. And the compensation and the contracts were different. We had fixed price contracts in there, but if something changed, you can change the fixed price as well. So, like I said, the rising complexity for cables and stuff. Sure, fixed price estimation was, let's say, just a number, 10,000 euros, but in the end it was 20,000. Yeah, it changed. Um, and in certain cases, it was also diamond, uh, diamond material based. Yes, it's different kind of compensation, different kind of contracts. But uh, if you're talking about compensating for motivation or like bonus schemes or something like that, this was not not so much in my interest. And what we really compensated there was that they had a, a lunch every day, for example. This was much better than than everything else. Yeah, it did. <laughs> because we built more stuff than expected. Not because we built different stuff, but much more. Like I said, we bought additional backyard space. We built a second hut. We have a new style stove there, and we have a, new, a much more sophisticated kitchen. So the budget changed, but it also went down in certain areas where we thought it's much more expensive. It's not just going up. Going up means we have additional stuff, but in other areas we, we saved time, you know. So budget went down in certain areas as well. Yeah, like I said, thank you.